Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Plank of the Week. And it is a special edition as well because, of course, it is Coronation Weekend. So whatever you're doing, uh, whether you're watching it, whether you did watch it, whether you don't want to watch it, uh, whether you're going to watch it next week instead, never mind. Because Plank of the Week is always here and always ready for you. We've got a great panel, a beautiful panel, in fact, today. Kevin O'Sullivan returns for the first time in ages, right? Amanda Devlin's back from the sun and all first-timers in this new studio. Will Geddes is back from somewhere quite dangerous, I suspect. And Isabel Oakshot is always somewhere dangerous, but here she is. <laughs> Uh, beware of Isabel Oakshot if anybody ever sees her out and about. Anyway, this is Plank of the Week, of course, and this is what we are going to be giving away at the end. And let's get things off to a, a heavenly start with uh, Kevin O'Sullivan. Uh, well, my first nomination for Plank of the Week is Justin Welby, the right. god-awful Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> a man who really should not exist. Uh, apparently, he found God when he was in the oil industry and therefore switched to becoming a top cleric. Which is he unusual, because should... nobody looking for oil. Uh, yeah, he should, oil yeah, yeah, he should have stayed in the oil industry and left us all alone. Ever since he took over this holy position, he's been imposing his woke nonsense on us. Uh, and uh, this week, he came up uh, with something that I don't approve of. I think it's a stupid thing. I think it's a really bad move by the royal family. And that was, of course, to invite us all yes. to swear our, an oath of allegiance mm. to the king on Saturday. An absurd notion. Uh, another foot wrong by this ridiculous yeah. Archbishop of Canterbury, who, among other things, uh, wants to go through the uh, cathedral, uh, Canterbury Cathedral, and pick out all the uh, statues, right. the holy ancient statues uh, that are linked to slavery and destroy them. Right, he's great. also going round graveyards all over... Shouldn't Britain. he just knock down the cathedral while yeah, he's yeah, at well, it? That, no, no, just knock Cause... him down. Right. Knock him down. <laughs> he is absolutely... Obviously, we don't encourage that sort of thing. I mean, the... the, 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 the um, the, the the thing about this guy uh, and the, sw the the oath of allegiance is just the latest of his many mistakes. It's well, do you know the other thing that I object to about the oath of allegiance is that you're not only swearing allegiance to him; it's an oath of allegiance to him and his heirs, yeah, yeah. which technically means you're also swearing an oath to um, William, uh, to Harry, yeah. uh, and to Andrew. So, so, yeah, She's shaking a, her head. Over it's, it's anachronistic. It's it's uh, 2023. It's not 1623. It's a bad move. But then again, this is what Justin Welby does for a living. He makes Makes bad moves. Yes. And he is Archbishop of Woke. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's <laughs> absolutely symptomatic of these people in there, the, these woke, uh, fashionable, liberal, metropolitan elite in their ivory towers, uh, looking down on the rest of us, telling us what to do. But surely you should be worried about it, slavery. Is, I'm not. <laughs> is he just asking for support for his boss? Because King Charles is the head of the, the Church of England. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Well, I mean, I'm not swearing an oath of allegiance. I, I wish the king all the best. I hope the coronation is a fantastic day and the nation has a wonderful party and an international celebration about it. But swearing an oath of allegiance, come on, that's ridiculous and symptomatic of the most ridiculous man in Britain. That's the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin... Well I mean, this well is a be. nomination I can really get behind. I actually <laughs> think the swearing allegiance thing is the least of his crimes. Yes, I, I think that this man is single-handedly responsible for basically crashing the Church of England. Yes. I think that he let down so many churchgoers during the pandemic by just not being yeah. bothered at Shutting all. Shutting the door, locking yeah. the, the doors. The churches were closed. What's wrong with a guy? His job is literally to lead and look after his flock of uh, parishioners and basically he just abandoned them. Yeah. He could have shown leadership and got people to have services outdoors, yeah. you know, been there for the people that for whom that was really important. I really feel strongly about this. And hasn't he also presided over the decision to pay reparations yes. because of the church's part mm. in slavery or mm. some nonsense? I mean, seriously, that old people's five pounds or two pounds or one pounds that goes into the collection mm. tray yeah. should be used for some yeah. kind of woke reparations. I find it absolutely mm. yeah, disgusting. Disgusting. Really good. Didn't point. he also I spend time yeah. during the pandemic basically slagging off Tories and saying that yes, God doesn't totally. really yeah, yeah, like totally. Tories. Yeah. If you are, yeah. uh, yeah. are God-like, you can't be at all. And, and, and God uh, wants more migrants to come here yeah. and so on and so forth. It's and you're right. It's coming out of his wheelhouse. Yeah. He, he starts getting out of his lane. Yeah. I, that, yeah. that for me. That's I mean, I understand the allegiance thing and, hey, I'm a strong royalist and monarchist 
Um, but will you be when pledging steps, allegiance, Will? What's that? Will you be pledging allegiance? I will allegiance? be pledging allegiance. When you pledge will. allegiance. I will be pledging allegiance. I'll when be thinking of you, Kev, while I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, well, so when you pledge <laughs> allegiance, will you be sitting alone in your home watching the telly going, I swear allegiance? I will. <laughs> I, I mean, will. it's I'll be ridiculous. I'll the national anthem. He can't yeah, say yeah. where he's going to be. But Isabel's <laughs> point is so correct. It, 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 the, 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 the chasm between this guy, Welby, and his congregations yeah. is epic. His yeah. lack of understanding yeah. of people who go to Church of England right. churches is profound. He's in the wrong job. Go back to the oil industry and leave us all alone. Hang on a second. Is this you auditioning for the job? I feel like you're in black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think I may like I'm not sure I'm going to vote for that one. <laughs> the very reverend Kevin O'Sullivan. <laughs> I, I think Kev would probably fizzle it. You look great in a mitre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might start wearing a mitre just for the hell of it. <laughs> it is extraordinary, though, how the Church of England has fallen, as you say, because, you know, it's yeah. an ever-diminishing um, congregation. Fewer and fewer people are going to church in this country. And if they are going to church, they're going to different churches rather than the Church of England. And, I mean, they've got so much money as well. Mm. If they want to do some good with the money rather than give reparations, mm. why don't they build some houses on some of the land that they own yeah. and put some people in those if they want to, you know, like arms for the poor? How about yeah, that as an idea? They own massive amounts you know? of property, don't mm. they? And during the pandemic, our local church thought it was too risky to have any bells ringing. So wow. For a period oh of two God. years, why? there were people standing forlornly outside ringing those little hand bells. I mean, oh beyond... Lord. That's pathetic. unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. remember anyway. the whole you can't sing thing as well, which they didn't do anything about either. Yeah, but it's, it's the removal of the statues, I think. It's stuff like that. It's that imposition of let's have do a selective erase, erasing of history. Mm. When, to be honest, they should be using that money to educate people. But they also, should. The whole also, just because you get rid of a statue say, doesn't mean that person didn't exist. We don't, we don't condone the, you know, it. We don't agree with it. But this is where we come from, and this is what we've got to improve on. I know we've got to move on. We have got to move on. Sad story, though. A, 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 a woman saying that her ancestors, who were um, her grandparents or something, were musical entertainers who in those days used to sort of black up. We don't approve of that. Mm. Uh, Justin Welby had their gravestone yanked. What? Oh. I mean, that's it's outrageous. disgusting. That's, it's that's disgusting. That's, outrageous. that's desecration. It really yeah. is. But, well, let's move on to another disgusting individual. Amanda, <laughs> who's your first nomination? It's Frankie Boyle. Quite right, too. Oh. Yeah. What an absolute horror show he is. Yeah. <laughs> he really I mean, is. He, he Nothing to do with the fact he's blocked me on Twitter. He has no sense no. of humour at all. Yeah. Oh, well, he... I mean, he's very controversial. Um, he's not really, though, because if he wanted to be funny. really controversial, he'd make fun of things which the left actually approve of. This is what I was going right? to say. I think... so. To take why he's this week's plank of the week yeah. is because he had a documentary out um, this week or a kind of a comedy comedy show, which wasn't funny at all. It was all about the Queen, the royal family, and how they should be abolished. And it was on Channel 4, Channel of course, four. wasn't it? Yes. Channel 4. Of course. <laughs> of course it was. And the things that he said, well, they, they were just not funny. Right. Um, but also, I mean, with the fact that he is someone who can be so... Um, Conf you know, confrontational and everything. It needs to have, like, a something yeah, funny. Yeah, but he's not, though. That's my point. He's not the confrontational. At all. If you actually confront him, he blocks you. Let's have a look at some of the things he thought yeah. were funny. I didn't make any jokes when the Queen died. I maintained a strict silence as I tried to sneak back out of her bedroom. In 1996, the divorce of Charles and Diana shook the monarchy to its foundations in hell. Prince Charles went on to marry Camilla Parker Bowles. Although they never had any children, because sadly, the two species can't interbreed. Yeah. I mean, I don't see anybody funny, laughing. Is it? it's, see, it's, I mean, it's actually quite objectionable. I, I like risky humour, and I like something which is a bit edgy and mm. probably inappropriate. Yeah. I look forward but to him telling some funny. jokes about Mohammed. Yeah. Hey? Mm. Oh, yeah. See how brave he is. And everyone's that allowed. This isn't a case of stopping anyone from having free speech. But it's, it's thinking, how, hang on, can you not be funny? without being this disgusting and disrespectful. Right. This, this is a guy who used to make rape jokes. Mm. Uh, and uh, in order, to, in order to get work at the BBC, he stopped making rape jokes, uh, jokes about women who'd been raped, and got went all woke, yeah. and therefore got work at the BBC, and, and of course, Channel 4. This guy is right at the heart of the new establishment. Channel 4 is the establi establishment's TV channel, and Frankie Boyle is the yeah. establishment's and, TV and can comedian. You, can you imagine if it was someone um, on the the right, who had said mm. the things that he said about yeah. the Queen in that documentary <laughs> just days before the King's going to yes. be sworn in. But you see, this is fair game. This is what we were saying earlier about, you know, Archbishop Welby as well. You know, as long as you target the right people, yeah. the lefty establishment yeah. will love you for it. You can say anything yeah. you like. There's even uh, a worse clip than that. Have, have a look at this one. At Victoria's coronation, some 400,000 people thronged the streets. 
Charles is hoping to emulate this by coinciding his coronation with a cost of living riot. The coronation will be a deeply uninspiring affair. Charles is keen to avoid having any royals at the ceremony who might cause a public embarrassment, so he's thinking of banning Andrew, Harry and himself. It's rumoured that the coronation is going to be so low-key that they'll forgo the traditional behind-closed-doors human sacrifice. Instead, they'll save money by simply running over a gamekeeper in a Land Rover. I mean, this is student level. It isn't really it? is. I mean, I actually I thought think the human sacrifice comedy was quite would funny. be better. Did you really? I mean, <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, <laughs> it, 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 it just was kind of like school level. I mean, it is. It was probably yeah. the last decent joke he told was about in 1985, I think. Mm. Yeah, I just, but I find it amazing that there'll be people presumably producing that kind of rubbish saying, right, oh, this is really good, yeah. Frankie. Yeah, but it's worse than that. They think they're counterculture. They're not. They're the culture. Yeah, yeah. They are at the heart of the establishment. The Guardian, Channel 4, people like Frankie Boyle, mm. they are the new establishment. They're not counterculture. No. They're propping up our stupid, new, woke... Uh, culture. But it's it's ridiculous. Actually... Feel free to interrupt at any time, by the way. It's never <laughs> shut up. Just yeah, yeah, well, yeah, come on, come on. Well, it's just, Raise your games. It's, honestly, it's just it's it's so disgusting that he's chosen to say things like in that in that show yeah. that about raising a bottle to the royals filled with petrol and a burning rag. Mm. When actually this week we've had someone um, outside the palace who was throwing out shotgun ca yeah, yeah. cartridges, um, you know, screaming up yeah. to kill the king, being arrested just days before the coronation. Um, you know, it, that, that, that's what the problem yeah. is, is that he might inspire someone. It's just not clever. I don't, do I don't something. worry so much about that. I just think it's not clever. It shouldn't really be on what you would call a mainstream TV channel. We know Channel 4 mm. isn't really, but it's just, it's kind of embarrassing. It's also depressing. It's sort of embarrassing. It's depressing, yeah. isn't it? Is this really the best that we yeah. can do? Is this the best we can muster? Because there's plenty of funny things you could say yeah. about the royals. And a lot of them. Yeah, absolutely. Right. They, they provide right. endless yeah. material, Low hanging fruit, really. It's not about yeah. not yeah. taking the mick out Yeah, which I think Well, it might not surprise you that there are a couple of members of the royal family we might be talking about later on in the show. Oh. Um, but Will... Um, <laughs> Hello, sir. Speaking of exploration of oil, you've got a first nomination I'm like a stout record here, aren't I? Well, listen... Just I Stop Oil. I don't have a problem with that. Just Stop Oil, my first nomination, and they really are low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Um, the, this lot, they never cease to, uh, to, to just, you know, instil absolutely zero faith mm. in anything that is sort of climate change or yeah. anything that They all actually... have great names, though, don't they? Like oh, there's the great, great, great names. But, they, you know, it, it's yeah. literally, it's literally getting the attention-seeking <laughs> children to sort of run around yeah. and say, please look at me, please yeah. listen to me. And, and to be honest, I just don't... I can't see how it's working in their favour. Mm. You know, they've been hitting a lot of AGMs recently mm. um, and standing up and protesting. And I know certainly some of the big companies have been having AGMs they're willing to listen. They're willing to give them a moment to actually say Why? their piece. Well, you know, See, because, I think that's because they don't I, want to become a target even more. No, than a not necessarily. Not necessarily. No, they, they realise they're going to be a target. But the, the fact of the matter is that it's literally like spoiled children screaming and shouting mm. and jumping about. And it's like, you know what? If, if you actually presented a sensible, pragmatic, they rational got one. argument, they haven't got one. Which is the fundamental idea. problem, right? They don't have a decent no. argument. So you know was it, Richard, whoever Richard it was that do. ran over the foot of a, was yeah. it just? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. brilliant. So I think they, if there's an opposite of a plank of the week, you yeah. know, maybe we should we should also have a hero yes. of the week. Actually, well, we drive the driver. Drive we can drive 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 yeah. yeah, we can drive. have a look. We, yeah. The police, yeah. of course, are investigating this, but this is what happened the other day. Yeah, cheerio. Oh, I, I think they got off lightly. I mean, I if I'd been in my car, I have to say, I'd, they'd be still hanging on to yeah. the bonnet in the windscreen. Yeah, I mean, what do they expect is going to happen? It's road. frustrating enough trying to get around in the city, yeah. in the capital city Someone's in particular. Someone's deliberately sitting but, on but the But seriously, yeah. we're, we're, we're in times of, because of our other, uh, I, don't, I don't know whether he's being nominated today, but Sadiq Khan, mm. because of the high I don't levels think he's of crime. He's having crime. a rare week off. I know, he's having a week off. <laughs> but the, the, the high levels of crime we got in this city, <laughs> won't be everybody's moving. feeling it. <laughs> if a whole bunch of hobbits start sort of clambering towards my car, mm. A, I don't want to damage my paintwork, but B, I'm going to drive through them. Yeah. You'd How be in trouble. You'd stop? be in prison. No, I wouldn't. But then the woman. Well, you know, no, no, maybe you're you. willing to not be a martyr. Maybe you're I'm quite happy. I'll that go woman, out today. Remember the woman who was done last year? Yeah. Um, the BMW woman. Yeah. Uh, no, the Range Rover. Oh, Range Rover. You're right. Yeah. She was. She lost her license. She was. She had. She was on with Jeremy Carl the other night. 
She's had a terrible time. I'd be appealing that. ludicrous amounts of money. Nobody even got injured. She was just trying to get through to go to work, to, wow. to, to run the business that she's been running yep. for such a long time. Well, Richard Littlejohn calls them uh, just stop everything. Yeah. And uh, that's basically what they are. They don't give a damn about the environment yeah. or green issues. Well, of course they don't. This is, this is a kind of anti-capitalist, anti-government, uh, anti-Tory, uh, yeah. everything. Also, even if, for example, everybody stopped driving, yeah. which is never going to happen, you know, it wouldn't actually alter anything other than people's ability to make any money and people's to have livelihoods. It wouldn't save the planet. Personally, I it think wouldn't make our lives last any longer. If you look at the proportion of, of impact that we're making in this country in climate change, yeah. it is minuscule compared no, to but we're doing Russia, more than most other China, countries are doing. India. So why aren't they over there actually appealing to the governments that can actually make a significant difference? They start to walk and over the reason there, being is because they'd never be seen again. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't get idea. into the papers, they <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be on TV. It's all about run over them. by more than about in, a, in a yeah. Ford uh, Sierra or whatever that was. Yeah. But, I mean, you so, know, they might find themselves... I mean, I just hope they don't turn up for the coronation. If they, they turn up... I mean, oh, they were wow. smart enough not to intercede yeah. with the, uh, the marathon, marathon. Because, I, I mean, if I've run the marathon, the London Marathon and a few others... And I, I must admit, I would have given someone a kicking if they got yeah. in my way. Yeah, very violent yeah. really today. Yeah. Okay? Uh, no, it's every day, man. But you know, you know, we're Wake laughing. up angry. It's a good way to start the day. But we're laughing about this guy driving over that person's foot. And it is funny. But because the police allow these idiots mm. to go on the road yeah. we, we, and never stop them, never arrest them, never get them yeah. off the road, before too long, mm. there will be an Someone's angry motorist who will go hurt. straight into them and Someone's kill them. Yeah. 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 It won't be because, you. because it'll drivers be, are very it'll be frustrated already. It'll be Will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'll be. Right. Isabel, what's your first nomination? Well, it kind of links to the Frankie yeah. Boyle thing. It's basically a collective, a group nomination for all the Republican whingers. Yeah. Yes. Um, we now know, because there's been some great new polling out this week that republicanism is not really a particularly strong thing in this no. country they are a minority and they're there but nonetheless they're in full hue and cry this week this is their moment mm. they've been building up to it you've got people like that ash sarkar who no. campaigns oh, yes. for so-called luxury communism whatever that is <laughs> that who's been saying that the royal what family are a bunch of weirdos and blah 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 well, look okay they're not perfect there may be some strange ones, but they're ours, mm. and they are a good thing for this country. Yeah, totally. And talking of luxury communism, the royals cost us one pound twenty-nine each yeah. a year, mm. and I think that's pretty good value in the kind of wages that the communists mm. should be but, pretty but proud of. We were on that bus yesterday, weren't we? I mean, London is absolutely packed yeah. with yeah. 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 foreigners, yeah, 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 yeah. tourists Americans from all over yeah. the world. Over, so yeah. they are good for this country. And yeah, as you say, the that. price of, of having the royal family is, is relatively low. And it provides us with a great, um, you know, see, so series of, of entertainment. <laughs> apart from but let's have a look, because sure as you say, these, these Republican idiots were out in force at a, um, a meeting up in Liverpool, where I think Charles uh, was about to show up. So let's have a look at this, what they were doing. thinking of but I can't say it obviously. Can you imagine how boring um, they must be? But imagine these people. idiots, I mean, right, sitting there sitting on sitting on sort of lentil cushions, you know, munching <laughs> you know, talking about how awful Britain is and yeah. how much better I you need are. A lentil cushion and we all want to go and live in a nice civilized country. Absolute morons. The great thing was the school kids who were out they to the greet right the idea. king yeah. actually made more noise and here they are. Brilliant. Love it. Brilliant. Oh, that's really awesome. Great, so yeah. the, Republic, the Republican movement, faith. nil, yeah. primary school children, one, yeah. I think. Yeah. There. So yeah. they're not really much of a force to be reckoned with. And you're quite right. It's yeah. a bit like Scottish independence. You know, oh. people think that it's a big thing, yeah. but actually it hasn't moved. The mm. dial has not moved in the, about 10 years. And by the way, the majority of SNP voters are anti-monarchy. Yeah. That is a surprise. Yeah, mm. isn't, that, yeah. isn't that very surprising? But, Although the study of, of whether if there was a referendum tomorrow... Uh, would you vote yes or no? Actually, in Scotland, it was still a majority voting yes. And, they actually, keep it. and actually, even among those who said they weren't that keen on the monarchy and would vote no, they were not that convinced it would make any difference. Yeah. Right. You know? 
Yeah, it is. I mean, it's all because, a bit half-hearted. Yeah, and I think all the arguments, they haven't got any new arguments either, whether no. it's Ash Sarkar or anybody else. They all come up with the same old rubbish. It's about the money. You know, there's too many of them. And it's not fair. And it costs too much money. It's not fair. Yeah, people need to lighten up. And I think, like, especially this weekend, it's going to be... The pubs are going to be heaving, putting loads of money back into the economy. After everything they've been through, the hospitality industry, in the past few years, like, that's just what it's all about. So... Yeah. And the lamest argument of, of all that they produce is that it's not fair that there are some people that are better than others. And yeah. Some people yeah, have more. Just, I mean, yeah. Well, really, life isn't, I mean, life yeah. isn't fair. Get used to it. But yeah. what are they going to do? Bankrupt the king or the, and the royal family, and then what? Do what with the money? I mean, it just it just doesn't make any sense. Give it all to they the Labour just, Party. Yeah, but and then they <laughs> squander it. Give so it we'd all, all just still. Stop oil, well, probably. same thing because <laughs> yeah. apparently yeah. Labour Party now take donations from people who give money to Just Stop Oil. So oh, really? why not cut out the middleman? But that's another story. Well, it's like life's not fair, then you die. That's yeah. the way yeah. it goes. That's you know? it. Yeah. That's just your life, Kevin. You know. Really not. There are those of us who have a much better time than Kevin O'Sullivan. That's why he's always wearing black constantly in mourning for his own life. Anyway, coming up next, we've got uh, some amazing nominees, including a newspaper that can't seem to get anything right. This is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're already well into it and we've already got some great nominees, I have to say. Uh, I'm going to kick it off uh, in this section with my nomination and it's one that I've made in the past quite a few times, but it's also um, a fellow journalistic endeavour. Well, you could call it that. It's called The Guardian, formerly known as The Manchester Guardian. <laughs> famously no famously started by slave owners. Um, and, uh, and also <laughs> completely and utterly anti It's called Slavery Daily. Yeah, it? Slavery, yeah. Slave of the Day. Yeah, that was it. They changed it to The Guardian because it wasn't selling very well. But, you know, how idiotic are these people? You know, these lefty journalists. First of all, we had them on last week because of Diane Abbott. Yeah. Diane Abbott wrote a letter to The Observer in which she expressed some very anti-Semitic views. Mm. You pointed out quite rightly, Kevin, um, that The Observer are so left-wing and anti-Semitic, they didn't even think it was a story. Yeah, I know. So they didn't even bother <laughs> yeah. running the story. They just ran the letter. Oh, they then apologised, took it down off the website. Literally less than a week later, I think it was, um, suddenly we lose uh, Richard Sharp, the uh, BBC chairman, for probably very good reasons. He probably should have gone before he did. Um, they decided, though, in the uh, guise of a Martin Rosen cartoon, to show this cartoon, which was clearly a very anti-Semitic depiction of a man who happens to be Jewish. Now, I didn't actually know Richard no, Sharp was I Jewish. didn't either. You know? I didn't either, no. But if you see the cartoon, you can see um, very easily why people who are Jewish would take offence at that, mm. why people who look at that would see that it is uh, a man depicted holding sort of wads of money, uh, with a big nose, very over-accentuated lips. Boris Johnson's in there as well. I mean, you know, there are those who say, well, it's a cartoon, you know, you're supposed to be able to lambast people. But anti-Semitism is anti-Semitism. And The Guardian have even now accepted that it was anti-Semitic. Um, Catherine Viner, um, the editor, who's been responsible for an awful lot of this kind of stuff, <laughs> yeah. um, has apologised to the uh, Board of Deputies. She's met with them. Rosen has said he's absolutely <coughs> ashamed of what he did, but he didn't think it was anti-Semitic at the time because he wasn't thinking about it. I don't see how any of that is possible. And I think you have to be... And I've spoken to people who've worked at The Guardian and they say it is incredible how... Uh, you know, anti-Semitic, a lot of people yeah. in The Guardian actually are. Yeah. I mean, and they don't think they are. It's that whole Labour Party thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, the, it is a thread that I'm afraid runs through elements of the Labour yeah. Party. So yeah, by doesn't Corbyn. Surprise Corbyn, me. Corbyn. Ex exactly that. I, I would have thought Charlie Hebdo would have been a kind of a warning shot to various publications yeah. just about measuring the sensitivity of certain cartoons that... Well, I don't know. Oh, yeah, but Charlie Hebdo was think... just a depiction of Mohammed. I know, uh, I know, You can't Kev, fault but, but, but you're saying, allowed to do that. Of course, and I, I'm not opposed to free speech, but I think there has to be a That's degree good. of consideration. <laughs> I, don't, no, I don't think it's about... Of, I don't, I don't of just think sensitivity. About that. That. No, I don't think it's about no? that, because it's, it's about what The Guardian has been accused of, and less, less than a week, let's face it, after what happened at The Observer, yeah. you know, the point about the point I suppose I'm trying to make is that there are people inside that organisation who don't understand yeah, yeah. that what they write and what they draw is anti-Semitic, and there's a big difference between you think that. It's just turned down. Well, I think so because but, I think they don't understand it. I think yeah. they don't get and it's the also fact. The, the fact that they don't um, actually mean the apology. You know, people yeah. like Diana, but you know, she came back with excuses. Yeah. There's always all of which something... turned out not to be true. It was a first draft. He didn't, she didn't realise what she so was doing. So they don't even own up to it, which shows that they don't understand right. why they they're being. They don't. No, Martin Rosen, uh, <laughs> who I used to uh, commission when I was at the Mirror, um, 
seemed like a nice guy and all that. Uh, but he kicked off with this after they published this ludicrous, ludicrously racist anti-Semitic cartoon that we estimate the other day, didn't we, Isabel, that probably, tw you can't say everyone on The Guardian is anti-Semitic, but uh, 20 or 30 executives would have seen that Well, they clearly didn't question it. And, they let, and they, no one questioned it. Right. Uh, those people are anti-Semitic, obviously. <clears throat> Uh, and it also took, know, them, took them a long time yeah. to take it down Rosen, off the website. Well. Rosen yes, yeah. uh, wrote a 1,000-word um, a explanation for this cartoon right. in which he pointed out that uh, he knew that Richard Sharp was Jewish because he went to a Jewish school with yeah. him. Uh, and, yeah. But at no point did he say... He said, I, his Jewishness didn't even occur to me. Mm. Uh, absolute cobblers. Uh, and has subsequently come out and said, actually... I'm really ashamed of this. I shouldn't have done it. I really apologise. In other words, the sands are shifting. You know, at first they think they can get away with yeah. it, and now they can't. And Catherine Vine has got a long way to go with the There garden. were plenty of people as well defending it, yeah. you know, on the left, who said, why is everybody getting so excited? Nobody even knew that this guy was a Jew. It's double standards. It really is yeah. double standards. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah. it's a sort of inability that they have to see what was going on. And the and Guardian I, is a massive news operation. Yeah. I, mean, I was really interested to read Fraser Nelson, editor of The Spectator's description of how they try to avoid this sort of thing happening mm. without censoring their writers and contributors, without saying, don't, you know, don't always yeah. be worrying about how things yeah. may be perceived. Mm. There is actually a system of checks and balances that nonetheless still kind of uh, tries to be a bit edgy without actually going way too but far. But they have censored writers in the offensive. past, haven't they? Who was that woman that, that they ended up parting company with who was writing what they perceived to be anti-trans women Ooh, stuff? I don't know. Um, I can't remember who it was. You, mean the Guardi that. you don't mean The Guardian? Yeah, The Guardian. She ended oh, up... Oh, oh Hadley Freeman. Freeman. Well, Hadley Freeman went no, no, not Hadley Freeman. No, but Hadley Freeman has spoken about... She hates I know, I know she who you mean. Yeah. I know who you mean. I'm afraid the woman with the big hair yeah. who exactly. was at the Mail on Sunday, yeah. whose name currently escapes me. Deborah something? No. Lest we forget, this is the paper that only about a month ago, The Guardian went into this sort of hand-wringing festival of apologies and sorry because they established stupidly about eight million years yeah. ago there was some kind of minor connection between the Guardian and slavery. Who gives a damn? They but they, they, they apologised. They said, we're going to give oh, they're millions, paying money. They're millions paying money of pounds out. to the oh, Caribbean. Really? We're going to set oh, yeah. up a Caribbean desk. Oh. So they think that that kind of racism is really, really serious. What they're proving with their attitude to this cartoon and indeed the Diane Abbott letter is exactly what Diane Abbott said, that uh, racism against Jews is not as bad as yeah. other forms of racism. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got to learn that that is not the case. Exactly. But they're so quick to attack other oh, media so outlets. Oh, cool. oh, yes. so well, because they're sanctimonious yeah. about it. But don't throw... They're the most the sanctimonious don't racists don't that I know. Yeah. Yes, so, they really are. Yeah. Right, so, uh, anyway, Kevin, down to you for your second uh, nomination. Sue, Sue Gray. Um, yes. She's some sort of civil servant uh, who... Uh, full of integrity, apparently. Yeah, full of integrity. Yeah. Uh, so uh, while she was uh, ostensibly working for the Tory government, working for Boris, uh, she was secretly engaged in negotiations with Keir Starmer to become his kind of chief of staff uh, for the Labour Party, uh, thereby proving or revealing her secret political affiliation, that she's a manic lefty. <laughs> uh, she didn't tell anyone about the, these uh, negotiations. Now she's in deep deep trouble mm. uh, because she has broken uh, or the allegation yeah. is uh, and everybody says she just has broken yeah. the civil service code this revolves around three things mm. uh, the civil service code you, you must be uh, strictly impartial you must be honest and you must uh, display mm. integrity she has been found to not have any of those traits well wow. she's lied yeah. she has no honesty and no integrity those those are the allegations right. well not she's proved. also not cooperating with an inquiry yeah, and now when she, she and ran an inquiry exactly. in which she insisted yeah. everybody cooperated yeah. with and now there's so the civil service are carrying out an investigation as you rightly say mike we found out uh, only this week that she's refused to cooperate do you think she might actually now lodge a bullying claim especially <laughs> if anyone's reminded her of the existence well, yeah, of course she will. Yeah. Of course she yeah. will. Definitely. Of course she will. Uh, I mean, this Aggress is... microaggressions, yeah. maybe. That's been shown <laughs> Should we see what uh, Keir Starmer has to say? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Please. Yeah. Because yeah. this yeah. would be good. Comedy value number one. I'm afraid, with 48 hours to the election, what's going on is the government is trying to sort of resurrect a story about Sue Gray mainly because they don't want to talk about the cost of living crisis, which actually is the thing that most people are most concerned about. So you think this is a timing issue? Oh look. Uh, you have to smile. <laughs> 
when the government raises an issue like this with 48 hours to go before the polls. Because they know it could potentially look, damage you. What, what I'd say to the government is, if you're listening to people across the country, they're not talking about Sue Gray. They're talking about not being able to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah, well, Keir, they're talking about Sue Gray now. Oh, he really is. I mean, he should be on for Plank of the Week. Every, 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 every week. It's a permanent position. You could have just a little <laughs> but, picture of him there. I mean, the word, the word is that the civil service are particularly furious with her for her deceptive mm. ways. Mm. Right. Uh, what about uh, Simon uh, Case? Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's he, he, the, then, he then decides not to Cabinet release Secretary. the yeah the interim report that they've got so yeah, far yeah. on the basis that uh, he's got cold feet. And there is some suggestion that he might be worried yeah. that I he looks like he hasn't got any he's integrity. Not cold either. Feet. It's he's not has, has anybody got any integrity in he's he, fears that he fears the same fate. He's another useless idiot. By the way, Sue <laughs> Gray, Sue Gray, Sue Gray, has there ever I hate that, that there, name? Uh, How Gray by I name, Gray by has there ever been so much fuss about a dreary little white hall <laughs> pen pusher, you know, <laughs> who produced this, this useless, lot, this useless report into party game, yeah, yeah. which Simon Case couldn't, couldn't contribute to because he'd organised half the parties. Yeah. He doesn't want her to go. He wants her to uh, yeah. segue seamlessly to the Labour Party because he fears that he could uh, experience the same fate and when he quits, yeah. uh, he'll, he'll get kicked out and he won't be able to take a job immediately in the private sector. You know sector. what's going to happen? Yeah. I've just realised it. I can yeah. see it now. She will just be put into the House of Lords. Yeah. 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 Baroness really? That's yeah. what we need. Yeah. And she'll be, considered, yeah. and she'll be considered to be some, you know, incredibly wise yeah. old head yeah. Yeah. because she's so full of integrity. Yeah. And But this is what we've done now. We've elevated these characters yeah. if in the exactly. civil service, which yeah. I used to always consider to be an incredibly boring profession to it go is. into. I, the only people I knew that went into the civil service we're, were really boring, it's a boring individuals who <laughs> thought about having a nice pension and not having to work very hard and so yeah. it would seem that it, that's yeah. the case and th they've now been elevated because they've in some cases not even done their jobs but just for doing their jobs yeah. they suddenly become knights yeah. they become lords yeah. mm. you know they get sort of entry into the top board rooms of the country it's ludicrous yeah, she's already shared loads of secrets that she shouldn't have done with Keir Starmer mm. yeah. and if she gets that job she will share far far more they, these people know things that uh, the public never find out and yeah. that's the problem yeah. here uh, and uh, the civil service are so furious about it that they're trying to make sure that her gardening leave goes on for two years yeah. and therefore two she years. can't take up her position well, until wow. after the general yeah, election. Don't, I don't wow. think we should have to pay her for two years. No, God, no. exactly. It's ridiculous. Absolutely no. not. It's that Keir Starmer is doing such a bad job when he had this huge um, being ahead in the polls and then next thing he's Well, he's doing his very best to up. narrow the lead. How has he done that? Last point about exciting Sue Gray. That they always We're already running over. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, although on the face of it, she's a boring <laughs> little civil servant, actually, she's really a fun person because she all, always organised the Christmas parties. Oh, how appropriate. Great. Right. Can you imagine? This is, this is a pull in pink tassels. Yeah. Also, these are, like people, yeah, these are people who don't know the definition of the word interesting. But I would like never been interesting. Would you mind shutting up? Okay. Because we'd like to get on with the next part of the show, All which right, is then. not about All right. Sue Gray or Kevin O'Sullivan. It's your next nomination, Amanda. It's about Liz Truss. Okay. Ooh. There's a voice from the past. Yeah, I mean, I'm really sorry to do this to bring her up again because, you know, after 44 days, she just crashed our economy yes. and it's been a complete disaster. But now I've got to make you think about Liz yeah, Truss in a, in a bathrobe. Oh. Ooh. Right? Okay, bear with me. So, basically, she um, is has is refusing to pay a £12,000 bill mm. um, from that we've, we've I don't actually out. think she should pay it, by the way, but carry on, tell us what it's for. Don't, it for? don't fight me already. Well, Hang just on, tell right. us what it's for. OK, so it's for... What's the, the place? Chevington? Chevington. Chevington. Is that how you say it? Um, the in, Grace and Fraser home, isn't it? Ken, of the foreign section. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so she was there um, during the, um, the leadership yes. battle and ended up kind of running everything from there as a headquarters. Mm. And she was giving food and drink to everyone. She then... A, bath, a couple of bathrobes, some slippers went missing afterwards and yeah she's been she's, but it's she's quite a lot of money though isn't it it's twelve thousand. it's a lot of money for us as well i was going to say you must have had a van you know <laughs> put them all in the no, back you, you, you stay the tv in the bed you can the normally furniture. get the, the hotel dressing gown for about 65 65 75 quid can't you so this is an awful yeah. lot of dressing but it's just, it goes back to the whole expenses scandal years ago where why does she think that, that she's entitled to take these yeah. things well, and she not pay she for says she hasn't taken i don't think she personally took them so what will have happened she had like a shifting cast of people were coming in they're all really excited wondering if they're going to be part of the new administration 
and some of them just thought they could get away with taking some of the you mementos. Know, the, yeah. yeah, the little few mementos <laughs> and the evening labelled toiletries in the bathroom, whatever else. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think at this uh, gathering that she told all of her acolytes, look? We've got a busy 44 days ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to spend four of them here. I've got a, I've got a little anecdote about uh, bathrobes. So when the hotel st first started a bit worried giving them, about this. I was, no, no, no. There's this one. I was Eric? checking out. The, I was checking out of the, the, the Vienna Hilton, right, uh, alongside Pavarotti. Get you. And, and the receptionist <laughs> said, and the reception was before it was before people quite realised that they put little electronic chips into these uh, robes. And yeah. Do they? I do. Yeah, they do. Don't yeah, they don't do. try and. He's obviously an expert. So, so, so no, no, no. The receptionist said uh, to uh, to uh, Patty, so if you'd like to pay for the bathrobe, Mr. Pavarotti, uh, you're able to do that. <laughs> I'm surprised you could find. <laughs> I'm surprised you could fit. find one that fits it. Yeah. 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 He did. Um, look really embarrassed. <laughs> but we've got a clip of Liz Truss. Nothing to do with bathrobes, but this is something that I don't think anybody's <laughs> don't ever worry. seen. I've never seen it. Have a look at this. We do not that pe believe that people should be born to rule, or that they should put up and shut up about decisions that affect their everyday lives. Do you, conference, believe that? Do you? We asked them their opinion of the monarchy. Do you know what they said? They said, abolish them. We've had enough. So, believe it or not, that was Lib Dem Conference 1994. Wow. I'm not quite sure where, but that was Liz Truss, age 19, uh, being, 19 going being on a Republican yeah. uh, in one of her many uh, different guises as <laughs> a politician. Uh, because after that, of course, she later became a Remainer uh, and then later became a uh, Brexiteer yeah. and then later became Prime, Prime Minister. Minister. <laughs> before she was Foreign Secretary, of course. Um, I, mean, I think she's been invited to the career. coronation. Maybe that's going to be revoked well, now. I don't know. Yeah. We really need the clip of pork markets, I feel. Oh, yeah, it's exactly. a bit of pork the, the, the intonation there is so similar <laughs> yeah. to yeah. how it was. It's quite feisty there. For a, whenever you see, yeah. the, you know, it's like the William Hague speech I when they show like, I've got an admiration Yeah, for it, I mean, because it can't be an easy thing to do, but it also kind of outlines you as a bit of a geek, doesn't it, if you're doing that at that sort of age. I mean, when I was 19, they, I wasn't going to live down conferences. They they go, oh, what, you, what, you what was I? No, I can't tell you what I was doing. No, was, not me. Was that conference before the Lib Dems went out of existence? Yes, the that was when they actually used to have quite a few people yeah. as well. Do you remember the now, Lib Dems when they, yeah, yeah, they exist? They, they were around in the 90s. Yeah. Now yeah. they can have their conference in the SNP's yeah. battle bus, yeah. you know, if they want the to. The caravan. The caravan, yeah, yeah the motorhome. <laughs> but, you know, absolutely extraordinary. Now, coming up, we're getting rapidly through these, aren't we? Coming up, uh, we're going to have a pop star um, and also a tech giant as well before I give you my final nomination, which might be related to the royal family. This is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We are very well on the way to finding the winner, um, and there's probably quite a few contenders already. Uh, but let's go to Will for his next nomination. Who is it, Will? So, it's that tech giant, mm. as you referred to, Mike, yes. Google. Google. And, uh, and this is actually really worrying, uh, certainly mm. in the advent of uh, AI and chat GPT yes. and various other sort of technologies which are increasingly better, getting mm. better and better and better as we go along. We've got Google, which is probably the biggest search engine there is in the world yeah. that most of us have on our laptops or on our phones. Well, Google is now a word, isn't it? It's in the lexicon Absolutely. of words but, that you use to describe but, looking for things. But that's one word they're going to probably keep. Yes. Because there are many others that they're now trying to actually ban. ban. Yeah. And they're trying to remove so that if you have any of your Internet of Things, you know, your home Alexa or whatever mm. that you're using to, to give you various sort of uh, assistance and help, they're removing some fairly, I think, innocuous words, mm. and they're censoring us from being able to find them. Mm. Now, there are most of them apply to me, I think, you know, in certain cases. One of them is chubby. No, I don't think it's chubby. <laughs> I mean, that's one good example. Yeah. Uh, I mean, why, why, why chubby? But is it anything derogatory? But also things like whitelist, blacklist. Um, and there are a number of, number of just really innocuous and words. And are they suggesting that when you put that into a search engine, that they will... Because there are um, sort of... Bots, aren't there? And yeah, there are yeah, um, yeah. communication the systems which will yeah. th which will which will offer you alternative words mm. and will say, "Oh, you might not want to use that word. Why don't you use this word?" Well, yeah, it's quite insidious. But actually. it's also on the mm. search findings. So the way that Google works, because it's very libertarian, 
So if you were to write a blog, that is always going to, with the web crawlers, is always going to go higher up yeah. in the actual search engine and yeah. the search findings than, say, a publication or a, a news article or anything like that. Now, what it does mean is that if you've put up, if Amanda puts up a nice article and she's put in some of these key words mm. within her article on yeah. her blog, it's going to push it down. Right. It's going to push it so down it in won't terms be of found, searching. Then. So you're be... then in this guessing game, particularly mm. because of the spread of words. And you can search for these online, uh, even on Google, yeah. surprisingly, the words you can't use. The, the fact is it's making everybody think, well, actually, what's happened to free speech? Yeah. Because we can't actually use the words we may want to use. But they may already be doing this. It's now just sort of come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't say crazy, you can't say bonkers, and you can't say mad either. Yeah. And you can't say black hole, which is bad news for the Institute of Astronomy. You shouldn't say that. They're going to get blacklisted. Yeah, well, you can't say that either. Or my Saturday night. But, I mean, this is when we discover the sinister side of all of this. We heard this week, didn't we, that AI is actually not necessarily a force for good from oh, somebody who knows so. mm. all about AI. Yeah. And I think there's an awful lot of what I would call editing of speech going on without us even Behind the scenes it. that we don't yeah, even know about, I think Mike. so. Yeah, I wouldn't be absolutely. a sort of surprised. Yeah. Do you know, two uh, AI robots, uh, nobody knows why they did this, taught themselves Punjabi. They wow. could suddenly right. speak right. Punjabi. What you mean? Know, they nobody, just found the, a way they, to do they, it? They, they were spit, you know, communicating yeah. in Punjabi. That's nobody right. told them how to do it. Right. Uh, nobody knows why they did it. That's oh, the sort of. But this, but that's this the kind a, of territory we're imagine, in. I mean, there's this insidious side. the chaos side. if you, you know, your sat nav suddenly starts speaking to you in yeah. Punjabi yeah. or yeah. something. Very in easily. Your... I mean, uh, you look at the insidious <laughs> side, I mean, particularly in my sector, yeah. you know, deep fakes has been a concern for quite some time. Um, but there's also this voice cloning. So we have some oh, yeah. technology where we only need five words from you yeah, yeah. that we can then clone your voice exactly and have you then coincide that with deep faking. Right. We can have you making a statement about something that we've constructed and you've Which had nothing to do with. Which is why I think that whole banking thing... Yet at the same thing. time, they're now also isolating and banning sort of day-to-day, day yeah. words. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a real imbalance It's a very here. slippery slope, very, 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 very slippery yeah. slope. I once couldn't find my way around somewhere uh, and discovered that one of my kids, when they were quite young, had changed the sat nav to Belgium. <laughs> I was going, yeah. why can I not find I the postcode? Yeah. Oh, we've done that too. Well. We, we do that to each other's yeah. phones yeah. in our business. Yeah. We'll change it to Chinese you know, this or about, Mandarin this is, or something. This is a control the language and you control the people. Yeah. Ask George Orwell, but you can't do that because he's dead, yeah. but you know what I mean. Well, ask an AI version <laughs> of George Orwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He'll uh, tell you the answer in Time for your final nomination. <laughs> right, now, I'm, looking, for, be a good I'm one. looking forward to this one. So, Robbie Williams. Robbie Williams, amazing pop star. He's won so many awards. He's won, like, 18 Brit Awards eight German Echo Awards. I don't know what they are, but I think they're very hard to win. He's won three MTV Awards. The one award that he hasn't won, Mike, is Plank of the Week. It's true. And I feel that this is missing from his... <laughs> yeah. You know, from his, his repertoire. Trophy, his yeah. CV. <laughs> yes. yeah, his trophy cabinet. CV. Yeah. And he's made a really good go at winning this, I think, this week, because... Aged just, well, he's in his late 40s. Mm. Um, he has declared that basically he and his wife have given up shagging. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, that he said, he declared that doesn't everyone know that there's no sex after marriage? And I'm just like, Robbie, you know, everything that we thought about you, you yeah. know, you are... So you not this rock star. So he was in a boy star. band, for heaven's sake. I mean, sake. you yeah. know, he said, I'm, lo I'm loving angels and says, so I'm, I'm loving armchairs instead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pipes. Yeah, armchairs and pipes. He said, he described how sometimes he's just sitting on the sofa and um, Ada, who I think also, it was very ungallant of him to bring her into this. Yes. Because <laughs> she, apparently she sometimes says, oh, I think we should, I think we should do sex. That's and he's right. sitting there eating a tangerine going, well, I think I'll just carry on yeah, with the tangerine. Yeah, I'd rather have a satsuma, I think. I mean, how, how utterly <laughs> dismal yes. is this? What a bad name he's giving marriage. And, <laughs> and um, also, he's a bit young to be knocking it on the head, to be well, honest. He, yeah. he said, I hope I'm old before I die. It sounds like he's half dead before yeah. he's old. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Well, he's not even old in, in some people's He's 49. Books. Yeah, exactly right. So, I mean, I I, did, I do feel sorry for her. Also, it's the kind of thing you don't want people right. to talk That's about. That's why I just think it's so ungallant. It was like Jackie like no. Smith when she came out and said that her former husband had said to her that she was very good at sex. And I'm like, I just wish I'd never heard those oh, words. No. I, wish I, you never, I didn't want that. to know that. And then she went you off and embarked. You didn't need to spread it around. I'm sorry. I, I, mean, I feel that. like I'm you holding on to this that horrible now, piece of information can't unhear that, that she said it on a podcast. Oh, and no. I don't want to think about Robbie Williams' no. sex life, really. No. Um, and I think it's the, the sort of stuff that celebrities shouldn't tell us. Just wrong. Mm. Just, just wrong. Don't. They, they always do, though, when, they got, when they've got records to plug and new things to sell. So he's probably plugging. Well, you're a showbiz reporter. Well, it was the Sun story. It was in the Sun, wasn't it? But I just. Feel I'd be the one, the, the one, the person who would say, "Well, yeah, 
How many times do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Maybe he just hasn't had any opportunities <laughs> lately. I mean, Maybe. I mean, you can't be a good Satsuma sometimes, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, you went there. Only at Christmas. Oh, Only dear. at Christmas. Uh, anyway, coming up, uh, we'll be deciding who the Plank of the Week actually is, and I'll be giving you my final nomination, which is not a million miles away from California. As to be said, uh, this is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week, the final furlong. Here we are, because we've reached the end bit where I decide who's going to win. But before that, uh, just one final nomination from me, and you know who it's going to be, because it is Coronation Weekend, and you cannot do anything about coronations and the royal family without mentioning those two, Harry and Meghan. One of them's in California, one of them's here, one of them's um, the Duke, one of them's the Duchess of Sussex. It's a tale of two Sussexes, because... They haven't really dominated because nobody's really let them dominate this weekend, which is a good thing. Um, but I just thought we can't let it go without mentioning no. the fact that it took him ages to say he was coming. It took them both ages to decide whether they would come together or whether he would come on his own. Mm -hmm. I predicted he would come on his own, which is what he's doing. Um, all, all the way leading up to the weekend, there was still speculation he might not come at all. Nobody really mm -hmm. knows where he's supposed to be staying because the cottage in Windsor is supposedly no longer uh, open to him. No. Um, Lost uh, Frogmore. Because they've chucked all this stuff out and sent it back to him. Um, nobody really, he's not staying. He's staying for four hours at the ceremony and then he's going home again. So the whole kind of idea of him and her and also, lately, this week, they've, they've been back in the news because <coughs> the Markle family have been talking, yeah. those who don't speak to her, which is mm. most of them, um, saying how terrible it all is. The father saying he doesn't want her to bury him, but he really would like to have some kind of reconciliation. Let's not forget, Harry still never met him, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and he's the, the grandfather of the, cha the children that, that, that the grandfather has never met. Mm. It's extraordinary, I, really. I found yeah. that whole Tom, um, Markle thing really quite tragic. Yeah, yeah it is. Sad, I, isn't it? We can't know the full background of the no. rights and the wrongs, but what you have is a guy that's clearly in very, very failing health by yeah. his own admission, yeah. desperate to reconcile with his daughter, to meet his grandchildren, and, and she's just, what, swanning around a few hours' drive away, mm. saying, oh, it's all too difficult and, you know, too much. Three happen, hours. Three hours they yeah. could be. I mean, and also, he's thoughtful. going down the same route because what they're going to end up being is sort of isolated in Montecito. Yeah. Neither one of them really gets on with either of their families, yeah. which I find yeah. more than a coincidence. More really, than you know a coincidence. And, and the Harry and Meghan brand, the Sussex brand in America, is nosediving fast, yeah. Yeah. really bad. I mean, there's plenty of other celebrities over there, aren't exactly. there? Bigger names. Yeah. Who yeah. Are yeah. Uh, but I've also got friends who live in Montecito. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, play polo and that sort of thing. Ooh, and I know, get me, <laughs> get me. So you know some one. really important people there. Yeah? Yeah. You know, like yeah, you, yeah. Kev. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but th but they said they keep themselves very much to themselves. They don't even really sort of intermesh with the local. community. Well, they only intermesh with the sort of people they think can help them out. Yeah. I mean, you know, Possibly. they've been with Oprah yeah. Winfrey for a while. Uh, but she didn't go to the Met Gala, which a lot of people thought she should or would have done, uh, because she's trying to create this different image. You know, mm. she's had her hair straightened. She's going to be doing. She wasn't invited. You know, yeah, that's why. No. Well, that's yeah. well, that's another indicator <laughs> of how right? unimportant yeah. they are on the kind of the social circuit. Yeah. And in the end, you know, they're either royal or they're not. And I think at the moment they're falling in between the, the, the two sort of stools, and so they're not royal enough <laughs> to be welcomed into any party in America, and they're not famous enough either. And the Winfrey Degeneres set mm. in uh, Montecito. Are now ostracised. Yeah. At one point, well, because they, Oprah they must now embrace them because they thought they were well, great Well, Oprah news. must now think that that interview well, that she did yeah. was just so full of lies. Oh, that correct. She wishes she'd Oprah never done it. looks ridiculous yeah. in yeah. that interview. I'm yeah, she does. So so ridiculously overdramatic. They did yeah. what? Pauses, <laughs> you know, oh, please. Come again? Yeah, but uh, it's their behaviour <laughs> subsequent to that. And, that, and now so Oprah and the gang Harry. don't think they're good to be seen. Oh, Harry! Yeah. I can't go without doing the impersonation. Come on, Harry, Harry, can you bring me back some duty free mild? <laughs> Can you imagine her saying that? No, she never no. would. She probably doesn't smoke. Well, he wants to uh, put something in his... Uh, he wants to water down his marijuana, I think, doesn't he? Anyway, it's time to nominate <laughs> the Plank of the Week and to name the Plank of the Week. And I'm going to give it this week to Isabel Oakeshott. Yes. Uh, because oh. the moaning Republicans, right? You're You've got to say, I mean, what a man. week to be complaining about the monarchy. What a week. Pick your moments, people, please. And also, you might as well chuck... 
Frankie Boyle in there as well. Yeah. Because, you, you know, wrong he's wrong. also a moaning uh, mini. You might as well chuck, actually, Justin Welby in there. Yeah. You might as well just chuck, just stop <laughs> Boyle in there as well. Yes. Uh, because at the end of the day, they're messing up the coronation as well. So, yeah. quite yeah. frankly, <laughs> everybody's won at a party. We've all won. Apart Brilliant. From me, We've apparently. all won. I haven't won it. That's For some reason, I'm the only one. So, well done. By the way, like a participation prize. moaning <laughs> Republicans, you get one for, for turning up. <laughs> Thanks for wearing such an expensive jacket. Um, we'll see you next time, of course, right here. On Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Amanda. Thanks to Will. Thanks to Isabel. We'll see you next week. <laughs>